Hi guys, and welcome back to Brooklyn, where my husband and I have taken our 1881 townhouse back to the studs to create our modern family home for us and for our daughter. It's been a couple of months since my last video, revealing that we found brick walls behind our plaster and lath during our demolition, and I apologize for keeping you guys waiting. Things got very busy and I just couldn't keep up. In this episode, we take a look at the demolition of one of the oddest parts of our house that we've called the bump out. So if you're into the nuts and bolts of how 19th century townhouses were built and what it takes to bring them up to date, then click the subscribe button and like, okay? From the street, our house looks pretty much like any other 140-year-old house here in Brooklyn. But when you head up the driveway, you get a good look at what's been hanging off the back of our house for the last hundred years. It's a five foot by three foot bump out held up by steel supports. At the Brooklyn Department of Buildings, I discovered that in 1909, the owner applied for a permit to build a stairway from the third floor down to the courtyard where there was a workshop and a stable. Sometime later, the staircase was removed, but the landing was kept and enclosed when the owner put a bathroom in that corner of the house and the bump out became the new home of a bathtub. The steel supports underneath did a good job of holding up the 750 pounds that a full tub and a person would weigh, because for 80 years it hasn't budged. Once the old tub area is demolished, the plan is to keep that same depth, but this time creating a cantilever off the back that'll give our daughter's bedroom an additional 36 square feet, which in New York City is a lot. At long last, the time has come for the bump out to come down. Since they don't know exactly how it's attached, they decided to build a temporary wood frame around the inside of it, and then begin to peel away the exterior wall to reveal the actual framing. Once they strip it, we can see that on top of the steel supports, there's a foundation of wood beams that look like they came from railroad tracks. They're so big. Tomorrow we're gonna continue. Okay, well done. Everything. It all goes tomorrow? Yep. We have to. We have to. Yeah. 
Yeah. As the day comes to an end, our crew makes sure to attach some safety railings so the clumsy owners don't fall off shooting their videos. You probably already guessed that as soon as the crew left, Sean and I were up there looking through the debris for any interesting pieces of wood to keep. No idea what we're going to do with them, but why not? So today the demo continued on the bump out, and since the entire back wall of the house is going to be rebuilt, they began stripping it from the inside. Once a bump out has been removed, you can get a sense of time passing. Next to the red vinyl siding from the 80s, you can see the painted green wood siding on the house next door that the vinyl siding couldn't reach. But if you look further to the left, you can see the same wood siding behind our brick walls in its original brown state before it was painted in 1870. By the end of day two, the crew has stripped about two thirds of the back wall and the bump out. And you can get a look at the entire top floor that will become three bedrooms, two bathrooms and our laundry. It's day three and the crew sets up a small scaffold to begin taking down the bump out's steel supports. First they remove all the remaining wood at the top And then, before they begin cutting through the steel, they secure it with a rope to the beams up above to support the weight once it's cut free. Oh. Yeah. Once it's loose, the crew uses the ropes to lower it to the ground where they can dismantle it further. Thank you. 
I'm not sure what happened to the footage of the crew removing the lowest bits, but I can't find it. So we'll just have to jump to an hour later when it's all gone. Today, the crew has a monumental task now that the bump out is completely down. At the back of the house on the top floor, they're cutting through the existing floor to reach the beams underneath, which they're also cutting and removing in order to create the new three foot cantilever off the back of our house. The new beams will run in the opposite direction of the old ones so that they can stick out the back of the house to create the cantilever. The math on this means that for every foot of cantilever, you need four times as much support inside the house. So our three foot cantilever outside beams, we need to have the inside beams 12 feet long. Once they've removed the old beams, the crew then changes the direction and begins adding new beams and blocking between them. As they work, look past them at the wall and you can see the brown wood siding on the house next door that was built in 1880, a year before our house covered it and has kept that wood in pristine condition for 140 years. Here you can see how the 15 foot long beams are extending three feet out into the back of the house in order to create the new floor space for our daughter's bedroom. Then they begin to lay the subfloor down and puzzle it all into place. Since the plumbing is already in place against the walls, they need to cut the flooring to snugly fit it around the waste pipes. Nice job, huh? Then they finish laying down the rest of the subfloor. And by the end of the day, Stanley's putting up another temporary safety fence to keep us from falling out. Today, before we get back to the house, I want to show you our new waterfront park. For over 150 years, the Domino Sugar Refinery has been situated right here in Williamsburg, Brooklyn and it was designated a city landmark. So the exterior is being saved and repurposed as part of a large waterfront park on the grounds of the refinery. And when it's done, this is what the building will look like, keeping its original exterior, but with a brand new office building built inside of it. This photo shows how the old refinery will be surrounded by new residential buildings facing the river. Situated in a deep water section on the East River, the Domino Sugar Factory refined four million pounds of sugar daily and produced up to 98% of the sugar consumed in the United States. Domino Park includes over 30 large-scale salvaged artifacts like these original mooring bollards which secured docked ships bringing in raw sugar cane. The two 80-foot tall gantry cranes, now painted the color of a Tiffany gift box, were used to unload bulk sugar cane from freight ships for storage. At its peak in 1919, the Domino Sugar Refinery employed about 4,500 workers from Germany, Poland, Ireland, Puerto Rico, and Africa. Back at our house, the crew continues on the back wall of the house, cleaning up the edges where the new timber will be attached. Then they finish the back edge of the cantilever. And once the floor is done, they begin framing out the walls, starting at the floor. Adding in the header above our daughter's window. 
and then the studs next to it. And then they add the window and header in the guest bedroom next door. Finally, finishing up adding the studs above and below the new window openings. Since the weather's been unpredictable, they cover the back of the house in tarps. No one knows it yet, but those tarps and a few holes in the roof will be introduced to Hurricane Henry and Ida and a lot of water damage before the summer is over. Then the men strengthen the roof above by adding new timber blocking between the existing rafters. And one floor down, they finish adding the blocking underneath the new floor they've just created. Then the crew begins to strip the back wall on the second floor and prepares to frame out this wall as well. Once the entire back wall of the house is rebuilt, they can begin to build the internal walls, which is what I'll be showing you guys next time, okay? Now, if you like this video, please click on the subscribe and like buttons. Next time, as the metal studs go up, we get our first sense of what the rooms we've been seeing for years on architectural plans finally feels like in person. And it's fantastic and kind of mind-blowing. There's a window right there. We're going dumpster diving to answer the criticism so many had about how many black plastic bags we used in our demo. We'll reveal what we discovered during demolition that tells some of the story of who took care of this house over 140 years and who made their home right here as well. And I'll introduce you to the New York City program that offers residents free daffodil bulbs each October. What you doing there? 550 daffodil bulbs. The flowers are given to honor the lives lost here in New York City on September 11th. Okay, we got some work to do, so we'll see you next time.